My life is in your hands. My life is in your hands. You took control when I was young, when I was not able. My life is in your hands. My life is in your hands. You took control when I was young, when I was not able. Hi, welcome to my show called Inspired Blessings with Jim Marie Prince. So today my guest is uh, Lou uh, Filak and uh, you are one of the members actually probably in the beginning when they started this uh, of the Pro Bikers for Life. That's correct. Yeah, and I just want to thank you so much for being my guest today and for really, you know, kind of letting us know what Pro you know, Bikers for Life really does and what they stand for. Well, thank you so much. Well, thank you for having us. Uh, you know, it's a privilege to be here uh, and to be able to get out the word, uh, the pro-life word, and hopefully attract a couple of pro-life uh, bikers as well in the process and turn some hearts and minds. Right. Now, who was the founder? Uh, Tom Upcher and Mike Dresnick. Okay, and how long ago was it founded? Um, probably around 2009. 2009. Okay, right. and why, why did you feel that? Or why did they feel that they needed to uh, start this uh, ministry? Um, well, they were involved in some prayer vigils, and uh, the founder was already riding. And a sister that had been uh, the Sisters of Life uh, mm -hmm. had been at the uh, prayer vigil, and they turned to Thomas and they said, "Thomas, you should attract men to this ministry." and uh, with your motorcycles and it was a comment you know mm -hmm. and uh, Tom ran with it you know he took uh, this inspiration mm -hmm. and uh, sat down with and uh, with Mike Dresnick and told him what he was thinking and what he had heard and uh, between the two of them they came up with the pro bikers for life okay but why was he even at this uh Ra you know, rally or, or with the sisters. Is there why? Why was he even uh, supporting the cause? Uh, uh, Tom is very pro-life, mm -hmm. and uh, so was his buddy Mike. And what they were doing is uh, uh, praying uh, at a clinic, at an abortion clinic. Did they have a situation that they felt that uh, personally that they were passionate about, or just because they just felt life was important? I think it, for them uh, that it was uh, all life is sacred. Uh, from the moment of conception, and that uh, many young people uh, are not getting the truth, and to reach out to those people and to reach in a way where maybe um, they would be open to hear from someone that might be closer to a society that they're coming from, uh, used to, you know, mm -hmm. uh, where they might be more intimidated that from someone that's from clergy or from a church than they would be from a right. Bible. Right. Well, it isn't the norm to see tough-looking men on Harleys caring about unborn children, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so what has softened you, you, you know, your heart to be involved? Well, um, I have been riding bikes since I was a young boy from mini bikes, 11 years old, and raced some motocross through my uh, teenage years. And uh, I guess uh, about 2009, um, I had had my own uh, facing of demons. Uh, I, when I was about 23 years old, had uh, been involved in an abortion. And uh, in fact, um, I was the one that insisted that this abortion occur. And as a man, and certainly I was not acting mm -hmm. as a man at that time, uh, you know, it was out of total uh, fear, anger, uh, and to not only destroy my own child's life mm -hmm. and inheritance, but to also uh, harm the woman, uh, to harm myself. Mm -hmm. uh, abortion doesn't go away. That's something that stays with you forever. All right. Well, I'll tell you this. Usually, um, it seems like the responsibility is put on the female mm -hmm. more than men, you know men. Right. And. Um, so the fact that you actually feel this passion, you actually felt the loss yourself, you know, is, is, is a good thing that you actually cared 
Oh, you sure, know? sure. Yeah, you, there's no one in the world that can tell and wh me. And why did you, f why were you telling her to have the abortion? Uh, I, having many years, like 25 years to even, even want to think about it, mm -hmm. uh, that's how devastating abortion is. You just put a lid on it and you close it and you never want to go back to that spot again. Um, honestly, looking back, uh, it was out of total fear that someone else would raise my child or uh, my child would be harmed in some way. Did you feel that you didn't love her enough that you'd want to marry her to have Correct. a family? Correct. At that time, I had no business being in that relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, and when uh, the moment that I was told that she was pregnant, uh, it the whole realization, reality. And a lot of times when I'm out sidewalk counseling, I'll be talking to one of the young guys mm -hmm. and or even a woman right. and say to them, uh, you know, there's always adoption. Mm -hmm. And you can almost see in that moment, oh no, no way. If and I can't I, raise it, I'm gonna murder my child instead. Exactly, exactly. Hello. But, but <laughs> what know? it is, is it's that same thing I had back 30 something years ago. It's that defense of your own child, and it, it really is sad because on one side you don't see it, but on the other side internally mm -hmm. you're fighting. So I'm able to work with the people and let them recognize that emotion that they're having right at that moment. Right. You know that they're they're actually defending their child in a way of not for a moment of saying not putting right. it up for adoption. But would you almost say that they're almost like uh, saying? No, they're not going to be good enough to raise my child, so instead I'm going to kill my child, well, mur murder my child. I mean, yeah, that, it just doesn't seem to make sense. Right. And they're not, I don't think that they're really thinking of it as murder. You're, mm -hmm. You've either put it in your mind that you're going to stop this baby before it becomes a baby, not realizing it's already life that has begun. Right. You know, for example, I've had my tonsils out. Mm -hmm. I've had my appendix out. Mm -hmm. I don't mourn over that. I do right. mourn over the loss of my child. Right. You know, so no one can tell me that it's just tissue. Well, I hate to say it, but the lies have been that it's just tissue, so that's why they're thinking it's, it's an appendix or it's a tonsils, you know? They're not thinking of it as a human being. Exactly. Yeah, but uh, so that's good, the fact that you actually are courageous enough to, to really go out there and to really, you know, uh, involved with this ministry and to be able to just now what do you do uh, the pro bikers for life do they go to speak at churches do they do what what, what do they actually do uh, mainly we ride to uh, abortion clinics mm -hmm. and uh, we try to make sure that we at least have one person in prayer there mm -hmm. we don't do it alone we're always looking for uh, Jesus Christ to be leading us um, and then we just set up and we have some pamphlets and we have a nice uh, talk with the women coming by and the men coming by. We try to approach them. Uh, it's all through compassion. You know, it has to be if, if God's mercy and compassion is not coming through, you're not going to reach anybody. Right. And that's how right. it's done. In fact, before I begin any sidewalk counseling, I always ask God to, you know, lessen me and let the Holy Spirit come into me and let it be His words. I don't know. He's created the whole universe. Uh, he's created these uh, women and children and uh, men, and mm -hmm. these are all his children. I don't know which one needs to hear what, which one I'm supposed to speak to. And so I would just, you know, let it be your words, and that's how I go out there. And, you right. know, I just now, take now, how do uh, Pro Bikers uh, for Life get more people, uh, you know, that volunteer? Like, how do you get your... Uh get it out there? Do you ha are you on social media or oh, yeah. what, website and stuff? Yep. Uh, we have a, a web page called Pro Bikers for Life mm -hmm. and uh, you dot can com? see dot com. Yep. I'm sorry. Dot US. Dot US. Pro Bikers for Life dot US. Okay. And uh, you can go on there. Uh, we're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on uh, YouTube. You can see some of the videos. Uh, also, uh, we've been to World Youth Day in uh, Spain. And this year we'll be in World Youth Day in Poland. In okay. Fact, All right. So the question is, is this the, is your? Do you have like other groups in other states and countries and things like that? Or well, we do have other members in some other states, mm -hmm. uh, in Florida and Texas and Virginia. Uh, 
in Maine. We have a uh, woman that rides pro-life, and she's up in Maine. Uh, and we do have uh, a rider in Poland and a rider in Germany. So we are getting, uh, and Italy, sorry, mm -hmm. and Italy. Okay. Yep. So uh, people do pick up on us uh, and respond to the website uh, internationally. Right. And uh, reach out and, you know, and they give us a little bio and they're pro-life, believe in God, and we are good to go. The main thing that we want to make sure that anyone who's a pro biker for life must, must have self-control. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Because you will be attacked, sometimes uh, physically attacked. Really? People will spit or throw Have you had situations like that? Yeah, minor, mm -hmm. minor. Okay. Majority of everything is very positive. And you know what? On the other hand, you think because you guys yeah. are rough and tough looking type of thing that people wouldn't even want to bother you. Yeah. I think when, you know, sometimes you get some people that, you know, fanatically so start, yes. you know. Mostly what we've learned is, um, and they've shared with us later, that the people that yell out usually are wounded in some mm -hmm. from abortion. That's, you know, what we've seen most of the time. Right. I remember one time Thomas um, was sidewalk counseling and he went to give this woman a, a pamphlet and she proceeded to uh, really curse him out mm. and, uh, and then went and took a step away and Thomas said, you know what? And she turned around and said, what? He goes, you're really beautiful and God loves you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, she came walking back and she said, I'm really sorry for what right. I said to you. Right. And, uh, you know, the, when you meet people like that, you know, you yeah, know. Yeah, that defense, it does something, sure. Sure. Now, I had first met you actually uh, because uh, it was the first March for Life of New York uh, event in which you, uh, Pro Bikers for Life, actually uh, led, right? Yep. The procession. That was yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. yep. Beautiful day. So, oh, beautiful, you know, right between a day of rain and God always plants the date perfect, you know? Yeah, that was, that was, it was a really nice event. So the fact that uh, hopefully it would, it's going to be an annual thing and hopefully one year we won't have to do it because it was, you know, Roe versus Wade will be turned over. Um, yeah, they also had me up on there and in which I kind of shared my testimony. Mm -hmm. And basically, uh, you know, the fact that I was found two days old in a bathroom in Korea, but I, I say that that's a better option than being aborted. At least I was sure. given a chance to live. So God had given me an, an amazing testimony, and, and one in which um, I would all of a sudden just uh, come out with the melodies and the songs. So one day, um, I happened to listen on Hope Radio, Pastor Richard Anderson. He was, he was interviewing somebody, and they were talking about how partial birth abortion was done, where they actually drill a hole in the skull, and they, they suck out the brain, and then they crush the skull, and then they pull out the baby with the forceps. When I heard that, I was like uh, shocked. I was appalled that, that they could do something so hideous like that and, and barbaric. And it inspired me to uh, write the song called For I'm Not Even Born. And so mm. I've been blessed that um, God has uh, had it on different uh, radio stations and things like that. And so I'd like to play for you so you can awesome. be able to hear it. Awesome, thank okay. you. And, and, and Emmy Pellegrino uh, sings an awesome mm -hmm. singer. So it's called For I Am Not Even Born. Mm -hmm. Please let me live, don't let me die If you know God, then do His will Give me a chance to breathe the air My Father in Heaven has given me let me see the splendor of all the beautiful things that were created for me to see. Let my soul long for God. Let the Spirit of God come alive inside of me. 
Absolutely. Like I said, it's uh, because of hearing that and just realizing that these children, you know, they can't speak for themselves. So we, you know, so there has to be other people. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, when you have a turnaround and we work with the girl, uh, the mother for uh, whatever time, you know, up to the pregnancy, after the pregnancy. Oh, you do? Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just beautiful to hold that baby in mm -hmm. your arms and sure. know that that child is here. And, that, and to see that joy mm -hmm. in the mother and the father's uh, eyes, because we've had couples that uh, said yes and they stayed together. By the way, most couples that go down to an abortion clinic and abort their child, 95% uh, of them never stay together. So it's very, it's a Well, I think it's, yeah, because they're, they're probably angry at each other that, you know, or the fact that they realized what could have been and they didn't let it be. Sure. And relationships are about communication. Mm -hmm. And you don't talk about abortion. Mm -hmm. Well, you because know, you that's, know why? It's, it's saying I did something wrong and I don't want to talk about it. That's it. It's very painful. So now you're, you know, you're a couple sitting at the kitchen table and there's this big white elephant in the room mm -hmm. that no one wants to talk about. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know. It right. ends up really being uh, crushing to the uh, relationship. Right. Yeah. I had uh, Dr. Al she, I had uh, interviewed Dr. Alveda King, Martin Luther King's uh, oh, niece. Fantastic. Yeah, yes. she had an amazing testimony. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, I've it heard her speak as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so the thing is, is that it's just important for us to speak for the unborn and to try to get Roe versus Wade turned and. Um, with the election coming on, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, well, you know, it, it, all words are done through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we just, I, I really believe that as a society, because so many of us have turned away from God, that all the evil we're seeing, starting with abortion, um, and you look over the last 40 years, what's happened around the world, what's happened in our own country, if we accept death of innocent children in the womb, mm -hmm. then we accept anything. Right. And mm -hmm. uh, we're seeing the, oh. the, the bottom fall out well, with this. Well, we, we've seen a lot of uh, things that used to be right is now considered wrong. Right. I mean, you are seeing what's been said in Revelations, what's been said in Matthew, and, and so on. And how do you know when Jesus will be coming? Well, here, these are these signs. Yes. You know, and there's a lot of signs happening these days, and it's very troublesome 
and uh, I, I would say for somebody who doesn't believe in, in, in Jesus Christ and knowing that he, he's mm -hmm. your, he could be your savior, they must be having such fear, living in such fear. Yeah, exactly. You, you, you just don't ha you feel like, you must feel like your back is against the wall. Like, mm -hmm. uh, and the cliff is right behind that. So, right. uh, yeah, I, I was blessed because when I was a young boy, uh, about five years old, we used to live in Maine and have to get in these snowsuits. It was like going in deep sea diving mm -hmm. outfits at 20. And my grandmother, when I'd come back in all frozen after 15 minutes out there, you know, I couldn't get the zipper open. I'd start getting frustrated. Right. And she'd be like, Lou, let's just say a prayer to Jesus and help us with it. That zipper came down every time, like, bank, you know, right. and, uh, you know, taught me the Lord's Prayer, and so, you know, I, I was given that seed as a young boy, you know. Unfortunately, I walked away from it uh, right. for uh, a bit when I was a young man, well, it's and the thank God of back life. now. Yep. Yeah. You know, I always used to say, uh, or I used to think, like, how unfair is it that we're physical beings, we're living in a physical world, and we're physical beings, but we're supposed to live like we're spiritual people, you know, mm. and, and to be like Christ. And I guess my eyes probably really understood of when he said it was finished, and when he said it's finished on the cross, mm. is that he wants to give us that spiritual power to be able to live in the physical world so we can get through the trials of life, so we, maybe we mm. could have abundant life, so maybe we could have better health if we trust and believe. Absolutely. You know, so even the people, um, you know, the, the, the ladies that have had these abortions, God forgives you, you know, if, if they would understand that, if Very, it's, you know, and that could heal their soul. Oh, that's so important. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I've also, uh, I for myself, went to a retreat for uh, women who have had abortions mm -hmm. called Rachel's Vineyard Retreat. Okay, I've heard of that. And also uh, the Catholic Church does uh, Project Rachel, so two very good uh, programs that mm -hmm. people can go to. And the healing in them is unbelievable. And I can't stress it enough. Anyone that's uh, ever uh, been involved in abortion, whether a woman or a man, uh, definitely go. Uh, it's usually done over a weekend mm -hmm. or during a course. And you will see powerful, powerful healing from the uh, hand of God. It's, it's powerful. Um, then later, I worked in uh, the Rachel Vineyard Ministry. And just when you, first of all, I just want to say, when you see the pain of a woman who's had an abortion 50, 60 years ago, mm -hmm. even before Roe versus mm -hmm. Wade, mm -hmm. before it was legal, really? or just after, mm -hmm. 30, 40 years later, and that pain and that wailing, mm. and the first time they're sharing that mm -hmm. is unbelievable. And just <clears throat> to give you an idea how deep that wound runs. And by the time that that ministry finishes up, that course, that person who came in all drawn and mm -hmm, like the mm -hmm. life sucked out, right, right. are back uh, alive with the spirit. Right. And it's just unbelievable. Well, I think what it is, it's, it's having um, other people around you that have gone through that pain, that choice. We're here, you know, in, in their physical, earthly, you know, let's say their life, their normal life, you don't want to bring it up because you're shamed. Mm, that's right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you don't maybe even want to tell anybody because maybe nobody even knew about it. Right. You know, so there's a lot of things that you, you just can't even release your feelings mm. and to be able to, to share. So that, that's probably the time when they're able to do that because they know why they're there. They know the other people that are there is because that they're there. Exactly. Uh, I also uh, volunteer at the uh, Life Center of Long Island, mm -hmm. and we help women that are in uh, crisis pregnancies, and uh, we also help care for the children for like up to two years past mm -hmm. the pregnancy. So it's not just, hey, have the baby and then good luck. It's, uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, ministry that uh, reaches out. We help uh, over 5,000 women a year mm -hmm. and approximately give or take around 120 baby saves a year. Wow, wow. And many times in those um, sessions when we're sitting down and meeting uh, the mother for the first time, we will talk and that'll be the first time that uh, she will share and the men also, we mm -hmm. counsel the men, uh, will be the first time they say, Lou, you're the first person I'm telling this to, right. you know, right. and they share. And, right. uh, it's so hard, you know, because right. sure. uh, it's a wound that goes very deep. 
right, right to your center core. Right. Well, I am just, uh, you know, thankful that you are here and that you're really sharing, you know, on the men's perspective, because usually it's always the female sure. that you hear. So it's great to see that you're really right. taking the time to share. And also, you know, hopefully that women will see and know that men do suffer from mm -hmm. abortion. Right. Yeah. I, but, you know, also being out there uh, in front of an abortion clinic, many times we're out there and unfortunately the men are escorting them there. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are times when uh, uh, a husband is bringing his wife there mm -hmm. and he doesn't want the abortion to go down. Mm -hmm. And I'm standing with him outside while he's crying because he mm -hmm. knows right. he has two children already and his third child that he should have is uh, being aborted. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, this is, this is, you know, it, it's devastating, you know. And well, just think of how many maybe lives you know babies that were saved through your ministry and through the other ministries as well so it's it's definitely a blessing and uh, so again your website is uh, www.probikersforlife.us okay good so people have to research it and check it out and uh, to see how maybe they might be able to volunteer and help you out yeah. but um, you know the whole pro-life movement is growing and growing and it the beautiful thing about the pro-life movement is that it's so many young people now. Um, and they know, we have a generation now that knows that their brothers and sisters are not here right. because of abortion. Right. So they're very well, well aware of it. May God continue to bless your ministry. Amen. Thank you so oh, much thank Luke, you. for being my guest. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, so thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, I'm sure that you realize it's such an important topic that you know life is important and that we need to speak up for the unborn babies. So I want to thank you for joining us today. Also, I do do speaking events, so if you're interested to have me come in and to share my testimony, and especially, like I said, is that I got a pro-life stand, um, you know, definitely give me, um, reach out to me at my website at jeanmarieprince.com, along with the fact that I'm looking to get more likes on my Facebook page, and this way you'll learn also about our guest as well. And if you're interested in, again, listening to a sample of that song, you can go to cdbaby.com and you know, the, uh, also you can go onto my website and you can learn more about the, the different things that uh, inspire blessings as well. So again, thank you for joining us today and keep inspired blessings within arm's reach to help give you comfort when others are at a loss for words. Thank you and God bless. JeanMariePrince.com and CDBaby.com To accept and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please say this prayer. I know that I am a sinner who needs forgiveness. Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins and purify me. I know that you died and rose again to pay for my sins. I need you to be my Lord and Savior for the rest of my life. Thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. With man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. My life is in your hands. My life is in your hands. You took control when I was young, when I was not able. I had no mother to love me or a father to give me. Lord